There are a lot of remarkable stories that have come out about 9-11. Today, you can add David Griffin's story to that list. That's part of the uh, smaller pieces of the curtain wall that's buried. Two days after 9-11, David Griffin says he packed up his wife and kids and drove to New York. He put on a hard hat and snuck his way into the World Trade Center site. He says it wasn't long before he started offering his expertise to New York officials, starting with how to take down a dangerous 27-story wall that was left standing. I got an idea, let's do it this way, this is the way we can get it down. He spins around, he says, you know, who are you? I said, well, I'm David Griffin from North Carolina, which he didn't think I was from Brooklyn. <laughs> you know, and this is all that's left of the Marriott Vista Hotel right here. Griffin says at first, New Yorkers were skeptical about the 33-year-old demolition man from Greensboro. One of the engineers, you're like, what, like a tractor pull, you know, making fun of it. So I said, well, if you take a drink can and go to wiggling it, it'll crack and go into failure. That's the best way I knew how to explain it in my southern charm of, uh, for all these engineers. Griffin says his southern charm and low bid won the contract. They opened the first two bids and let's just say their bids was in the millions of dollars and our bid was uh, $100,000. Griffin's idea on how to take down the 27-story wall worked and soon New York officials were no longer skeptical. Suddenly, the North Carolina man who snuck his way in became the man in charge. We'd like to hire you to put you in charge and oversee all the demolition of the site. And uh, I said, well, I need to think about it. And he said, you got two hours. And uh, so I called my wife and I called my dad and got their blessing. And uh, so we signed up for it. Griffin says what he saw in person was far worse than the pictures he'd seen on television. Looking back, it was pretty crazy and, and even some people told me I was crazy for even going and I even told them I said well you know what if nothing works out I'll be back home Monday. Griffin didn't go home that Monday he ended up spending nine months in New York. He says he worked side by side with tough New York iron workers making friends with several of them a friendship that continues to this day. Growing up I, I thought me and New York had zero in common. Zero. <laughs> but it wound up and, uh, you know, I used to kid with them. I was like, some of y'all ain't as bad as I thought y'all was, you know, so it's... Uh... Griffin admits at first he had doubts about coming to New York. Honestly, I was a little scared that first couple hours, just uh, like, is this, Lord, is this the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? You know, it's, uh, you know, but something in my heart was saying I was doing the right thing. Today, the flag of honor created from the names of the nearly 3,000 people who died in the terrorist attacks of 9-11 hangs in the lobby of the D.H. Griffin Wrecking Company. You were there right in the heart of this working on this project, and I'm wondering what do you bring away 20 years later? Yeah, I mean, for me, it, uh, I've told people, I, I just hope America never forgets. I remember how united we felt as a country for at least that first, really for the first year, but we don't need to forget what the ultimate sacrifice uh, a lot of people paid that day and uh, just never forget. But as America, we got knocked down, we got back up, and that's what we're about. David Griffin says it's an honor to be one of the thousands of people who worked on the World Trade Center site. In Greensboro, Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News.